This is our train. This is our train. Now this area I'm standing in front of may look like a river, but it is in fact a moat. So uh <laughs> Good morning folks from a spring morning here in Wuhan. It is actually rather brisk compared to some of the more recent weather we've been having. But we're not staying in Wuhan today. We've got some breakfast, some coffee. We're heading off to the train station once again. Today we're heading to a city called Xiangyang. Where you may ask? Well, ask Kublai Khan, former leader of the Mongol army. He knows all about this place. Well, he did when he was alive. Led over a hundred thousand troops there to try and capture it from the Chinese. It's quite a story. Let's go see if we can find out some more. It's 7.20 now. Hoping to get a train for 8.30. Right, we're off the subway. It's now 7.45. There's a train at 8.30 I would like to get, which will obviously start boarding a quarter past. Depends on how long the queue is to buy tickets, whether we get that one. Otherwise, there's one at 8.58, but that one takes 20 minutes longer to get there. So I would like to get the 8.30 if possible. Uh, also, given that this is a totally different train station, I'm kind of back to square one as to where the hell to go, but follow the signs. Ticket office. <laughs> Big old train station. Uh, ticket office is up here. So, fingers crossed for a short queue and remaining tickets. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Holy moly, well we got the tickets. That lady was full on. She was multitasking, she was having an argument with one lady, yelling at another guy that the train that he wants doesn't leave from this station. She was processing my one while the guy behind me was kind of complaining it was taking so long. <clears throat> yeah. But anyway, we got the ticket we wanted, 8.30, it's now like 8.05, so we've still got 10 minutes to kill before we can probably get through and start boarding the train. The train back to Wuhan is tomorrow, so we're going to spend the night in Xiangyang, but um, we can breathe, 10 minutes, and then uh, we'll get ready to go through security. Total price for those tickets was 240, because we're going over 200 k's to this, uh, this other city, so um, yeah, it's like 30 bucks American, so like in the scheme of things, not too bad, but that's a lot of subway rides. But um, yeah, anyway, let's grab a drink and then head on through security. This is our train. This is our train. Smoggy out there. Well, folks, an hour and ten minutes later, and we are here in Xiangyang. Weather seems kind of mild compared to the last few days, it hasn't reached 30 degrees. But it's mighty smoggy. So anyway, let's get out of the station and uh, see what we're going to get up to here in Shanghai. Well, I've gone through the little wee security check on the way out, manually, of course. Now it's time to jump on a bus and head into town. Also, I booked a hotel while I was on the train. So we'll have to find that at some point too. Well, folks, 
folks, here we are in Xiangyang City proper. The bus has just taken us from out, I guess, in the kind of country area, the less developed area where the train station is, and kind of brought us a bit more into town. Now, hopefully, if we head just on down this road, we should be able to find something pretty interesting. It involves Kublai Khan. So, let's take a wander. Now, modern Xiangyang, as we are here now, is certainly one of the biggest cities in this province, but in the scheme of things in China, it's not one of the biggest cities. Although, urban population of over 2 million kind of puts it on a par with like a Houston or you know, more than Birmingham in, um, in the UK. Certainly, it would be the biggest city in New Zealand, but we're less interested in the modern part of the city and more interested in that. Xiangyang ancient city. Xiangyang sits on, similar to Wuhan, the banks of the river. Although Wuhan sits on two rivers, the Yangtze River and the Han River, Xiangyang itself straddles the Han River on both sides. When I first moved to China, the city actually had a different name. It was called Xiangfan because essentially each side of the river had different names. Xiangyang on one side, Fancheng on the other side, so Xiangfan. But they've renamed the city now to kind of its more ancient name of Xiangyang. Now the reason Xiangyang was important in the more kind of ancient times is because it was a big old fortress guarding the Han River. Now this area I'm standing in front of may look like a river, but it is in fact a moat. It is a great moat which goes all around kind of a big square area of, of Xiangyang. I think this part of Xiangyang, although we haven't been in there yet, that's kind of considered the ancient city. Now you may notice this moat is pretty wide. There's a reason for that. Ancient kind of Chinese trebuchets and catapult siege equipment was able to effectively hit and destroy walls at a range of about a hundred meters. So they made sure the moat was wider than that. So any rocks which did manage to get across the river essentially just kind of bounced off the wall. They even had like a netting on the wall to, to kind of act as a little bit of a shield. So sure enough, the Mongols with their Chinese engineered catapults could not break down these walls for almost five years. There's like 8,000 defenders in here and 100,000 Mongol and other kind of supporting Mongol troops, not necessarily kind of Mongolian ethnicity, but all the forces of the Mongolian Empire. Because remember at this point, they go all the way out to kind of uh, the Middle East. Seeing as they're Chinese engineered catapults, which could only shoot effectively 100 odd meters, weren't doing the job, they sent word out west to the Middle East to get some Middle Eastern engineers to come out. Now they had a different kind of catapult, which had an effective range of some 500 meters. So this moat, whilst wide, it's not that wide. Once they finally got that siege equipment set up, smashed the hell out of the walls, cross the moat into the city. A siege which lasts four plus years is ended within a couple of days. Now I'm pretty sure they had two of these kind of square fort cities, one on each side of the river. One of them with those new siege weapons essentially got blasted to hell and the other one upon seeing what happened to its kind of sister fort uh, decided to pull up the white flag and they surrendered. So if I'm not mistaken this is the one that surrendered so this is the one that kind of remains all right i've gone on long enough about mongolian siege weapons and um you know catapults and stuff for uh for now so let's let's cross the moat and head on in to the ancient city So this is what this ancient kind of fort looks like from above. We have just been crossing the bridge here and the moat goes all the way around and then there's the Han River on the other side. <laughs> Unlike some of the buildings we've seen recently, this stuff is not just cladding. This is um, yeah, proper stone. 
Ah. Much like the Mongols, my way is blocked. I have a feeling to get up onto these walls, you have to pay. Sadly, Shanghai doesn't seem to have those kind of rental bikes. They do have rental, like, mopeds, but not just regular old bikes. Wandering around with a camera, it's easier if I've got, if I don't have to control a throttle, but anyway. Choices, choices. To go into a nice, air-conditioned, cool McDonald's, like a stereotypical foreigner, or go check out whatever that is. Now this seems to be some kind of like ancient themed street and that building behind us is actually a museum. Uh, the date that it said on the placard it seems to make me think it is a, a kind of reconstruction of an old previous building back from the kind of three digit AD period like three to five hundred AD so uh, this big sucker it's certainly not kind of like the real deal, but it is apparently the landmark building of Xiangyang. So, yes. Son, they're talking about food. Xiangyang's like most well-known dish is beef noodles. So we may have to get a bowl of those before we go. Maybe tomorrow when I'm not wearing a white shirt and likely to get broth all over myself. But yeah, ancient street, ancient theme street anyway. Well, I was being too cynical. We're up on the wall and it didn't cost us a cent. It just took a little bit of a walk. Now that there, that's the Han River. That's not the moat. That's the thing that the Mongols built a chain across to stop supplies getting into the forts here. There would have been one here and one across the river. But as I said, that's the one that would have gotten the, the treatment once the, uh, the Mongols had their siege equipment brought across from the western part of their great empire. But I would imagine maybe that area is more, more like the CBD than this this side we're on here, which is the kind of ancient city. But let's crack on, see what's up that way. Uh, Those girls have been trying to get a little routine for social media ready for about the last 10 minutes. I've been cooling off in the shade. I think we keep heading around the city. I was kind of hoping just to skirt around the um the city walls however look can't get around that area it's all kind of blocked off there's no there's no connecting path or walkway i suppose you could scamper up this way but then you're immediately blocked off anyway so yeah, that's a bit of a bugger. Right, we're now heading down the wall in the other direction. Let's see how far it goes. I also noticed in the blazing sunlight, nobody else is walking this way. So we got the wall to ourselves. Now these city walls are looking in remarkably good nick given how old they're supposed to be, but obviously they've been repaired and refurbished multiple times throughout history. I was talking mostly about the kind of Mongol invasion period, but this city having walls around it goes back much longer than that. Essentially the walls would be built, there'd be floods or they'd be destroyed in an invasion or 
you know, something would happen that would destroy them and that would be rebuild them and that's just kind of continued throughout history. There's always a Japanese connection. The Japanese bombed the hell out of Shangyang as well during the Second World War and apparently to evacuate people from the city they even had to kind of uh, demolish part of the walls to allow people to get out faster so yeah. It must be pretty cool to go to school with some city walls in the background. Oh, good save. Tell me this is not a dead end. It's a dead end. Okay. I think I know why nobody else is exploring this area. The walls. Like, I love a bit of history. And seeing the walls is really impressive, but... Once you've walked around kind of a kilometer of wall, you kind of walk around the whole thing. But anyway, let's keep going. Who knows what else we might see. Now, there are some stairs down there, but I've decided to keep going, man. Let's get these walls done. In one hit, we're going to walk the whole thing. Then we eat. Then we eat. Priorities. Plus, I can see there's one other person on the wall in this kind of sunny section. Oh, also, there's a nice breeze coming off the river right now. That's most welcome. You can imagine a massive Mongol fleet stretched across this river, chain across the river. When the Song government did send some supplies down the river, they tried to come in by the cover of nightfall. And when they struck the chain, they were trying to cut the thing while under siege. Some of them did get through to resupply the city, which was kind of a great morale boosting one for the defenders here. However, because nobody could get out of the city to say they would got through, the Song government assumed their resupply mission had been a failure. So they didn't send any more. Bugger for the defenders. Along with the motor traffic, I can also see a train's going across that bridge as well, but it's traveling mighty slow. We could have actually taken a different train to get here. We took the bullet train, which at one point was traveling over 300 kilometers an hour, and it didn't stop anywhere. Ours was the first stop, so it took an hour and 10 minutes, maybe 12. For half the price, we could have taken a train which takes three or four hours. But yeah, we'd probably only just be arriving now. This might be the end of the line. Hello. 是吧。I think we've walked the length of the wall. If I'm not mistaken. And according to our local friend there, this is the end of the wall. I kind of expected it to be more of a full square, but apparently I am mistaken unless it kind of continues off that way. But yeah, this seems to be the end of the road. There is a placard there. Let's see what that says. Just the Shangyang city wall. I wonder if we can get in that door at the bottom. There's a bike there. Gotta love a good door. And it is closed. Thwarted again, just like the Mongols. Pity I didn't bring my siege equipment with me. Alright, let's get out of the sunlight genuinely now and actually find some food. What can I say? I couldn't be asked walking. I tried one of these electric scooters. Mainly because there's nothing much around here. So we'll ride to a restaurant then we'll, we'll get off, get back to walking. Okay, just lock the bike. Back to that kind of main gate. 
uh, that only costs two quai and it seems these bikes are a lot more flexible as to where you can park them in Wuhan those bikes have got very very specific locations here these uh, mopeds are kind of more like more like the share bikes in Wuhan which you can park them anywhere within a big zone so yeah much more practical well we've left the touristy end of the kind of ancient city behind walk through that there are plenty of options for food but um, yeah some of them I'm a little bit worried about making a big mess myself and some of them were just blasting loud with music so not really my cup of tea we'll keep on having a wander I did walk past McDonald's and give it a second glance I'll admit it but um no rush it's only one o'clock Uh 就是這邊。一個重慶的一個,呃,這個這個這個這個這個這個這個這個這個這個這個這個這個這個這個這個這個這個這個這個這個這個這個這個這個這個這個這個這個這個這個這個這個這個這個這個這個這個這個這個這個
比我厉害一些。<笑>